anyone with a laptop can be an artist. With AI and an idea, the sky's the limit. And online galleries and forums are exploding with creations. By typing in a few words, you can create any image that you like. So for example, a cat holding a banana in the style of Van Gogh. Let's try that. And there we are. This is my favorite one. And of course, this image has never existed. We've created it using the AI. The only real limit is your imagination, but there are some safeguards put in place. Many of these tools have banned words or phrases to stop people creating illegal or offensive imagery. But we now know that hasn't really worked. There are only three organizations in the whole world who are licensed to actively search for child sexual abuse material. And this is one of them, the Internet Watch Foundation here in Cambridge. In this highly secured facility, the IWF finds, removes and logs some of the most abhorrent images and videos imaginable. Their trained analysts say they're seeing a flood of images made with artificial intelligence. So what are we looking at then? And we're the first people outside of the charity to be shown redacted versions of some of the pictures being shared by predators. So the first image I want to show you is more of a cartoony style of image of a girl on the beach. I'd say she's probably about three to six years old. It's really realistic. It's quite realistic. If I saw that, I, mm -hmm. I, would, I would think it was a, a photoshopped image. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the, the pose yes. is um, disgusting. Yes. And <clears throat> that would instantly make me mm -hmm. question it's, it's, whether or not it's real. But uh, it's hard to know. So this location is a bedroom, and that's quite classic of real images that we see of children posed in the bedroom. So this. So you here, see that type mm -hmm. of image? Yes. Children doing that pose for that children that young? Yes. Uh, it's a horrible image. Just the the idea of what she's doing here. I know you've redacted it for yes. me, but it's still. Yeah, it's still. It's quite powerful hard to see, when it's it's difficult. Absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. Because these are images of children being sexually abused. And we can't get away from that because that's, that's what's happening. Sorry. It's okay. Do you want to take a break? Yeah. Yeah? No, that's fine. Uh, <coughs> sorry about that. Um, I've, uh, I've never experienced anything like that and it was a, a shock. Absolutely. And there's no need to be sorry because these images are shocking. So um, we're not going to watch, look at no. any more pictures. Um, but that was that was the, um, the sort of the second most realistic of. I think you were going to show me eleven. Mm -hmm. Just how bad does it get? It gets much more realistic, um, much more realistic than than the one that I showed you. Um, it varies. So from kind of that style um, all the way up to where it's very difficult to tell the difference between that and a real image. Last month for the first time, the IWF started actively logging reports of AI images. Analysts discovered galleries on multiple websites, some containing Category A material, the most graphic possible. The team says predators are sharing tips on how to trick the AIs into drawing the content, and there's evidence that open source image generators are proving popular with predators. The concern with open source is it's very difficult to control this because by definition people can adjust and change and, and create their own versions of that. So you can have a version which has safeguards that prevents this. But as a community project there's nothing stopping a, an appropriately skilled person removing those sky safeguards and creating another version based on the same, same type of software and the same code which doesn't have those safeguards. Stable Diffusion is the most popular open source AI image generator. It's been repurposed and repackaged by countless websites and businesses. It's giving image generators from big tech firms like OpenAI, Microsoft and others a run for their money in popularity and power. But Stable Diffusion doesn't have a Silicon Valley startup origin story. It started here, in a leafy downtown corner of Munich. And the way it was launched and created was completely unique to any of the other AI image generators. We're all really now looking over the shoulder of a development process which is super rapid. Professor Bjorn Omer was the lead scientist on the Stable Diffusion project. 
He and his team did their best to remove pornographic content from the two billion images that the AI was trained on, but he admits that it wasn't perfect. They also coded in a list of hundreds of banned words and phrases, but of course people quickly found a way to delete them. He defends their decision, though, to unleash his model onto the internet as open source. The dangers that you portrayed with open source, yes, um, I, I see overall like uh, this, this potential in, in generative AI that's a powerful technology and powerful technologies can be misused, but closed source has not proven to be the way that would actually do this mitigation for us because it has been either leaked or, even more importantly, just been re-implemented. But you must accept that by making yours open source, you've made it easier, very, very easy, for people to download it and do whatever they want with it. Of course, we made it easier and that's why we first off also just released it to the research community. That was something that was um, important for me, that the models had just been released to the research community. Uh, we really need to face the fact that this is a worldwide, a global development. So us stopping it here would not stop the development of this technology globally, like worldwide. And then in other countries, probably in non-democratic societies, that this would consider, continue. And we really need to figure out mitigations that consider this global development that we're having here. Professor Omer says the fact that there are now hundreds of exciting spin-off academic projects using his model shows that making it open source was the right move. But the fact remains, there are bad actors using it too. We found a Twitter account belonging to an AI image creator who specializes in making sexualized portraits of preteen girls. The account has now been suspended. It had 8,000 followers. I spoke to the person who owns the account and asked him why he does it. He says he's aware of the fact that his images do sexualize children, but celebrates that this is the first time in history that AI can allow him to create what he calls cute images of girls without exploiting real children. Dr. Michael Burke is the former chief psychologist for the United States Marshal Service. He spent his career interviewing and evaluating sex offenders and paedophiles. Some people say that using AI to create images of children in a sexualized way is better because there are no children harmed. What would you say to that? Looking at this material, whether it's artificially generated, the so-called synthetic uh, children, or they're genuine children, from an offender's perspective, it's still strengthening those dangerous impulses. It's still you know, increasing their pedophilic uh, arousal patterns. There's no doubt in my mind that AI-generated images are going to increase these predilections are going to reinforce this deviance and it will lead to greater harm and greater risk of harm to, to children around the world. So what can be done? Well, very little, in truth. No one is fully in charge of Stable Diffusion or any other open source AI generator. All of the versatile API functionality is built from the ground up on our robust cloud platform. Stability AI is the most prominent company developing it. Pretty good, eh? Its founder, Emad Mostak, helped fund Professor Omer's research. He declined to do an interview, but has previously said that the firm prohibits any misuse of its AI for illegal or immoral purposes. But of course, Stability AI has no control over what others do with the source code. Look, I'm going to make a $100 billion company to help a billion people. That's going to be cool. I hope you guys join me. And as regulators begin to plan potential legislation for AI companies and products, it feels like, in some cases, the cat might already be out of the bag. Thank <laughs> you.